Hey guys, let's take a look at uh, algebraic phrases. This is the kind of the point where we uh, figure out how to take just English sentences that you have word problems with and turn them into algebra equations so we can solve them. We did a little bit of that last time, so let's do some more today. First off, make sure you know these four words. Sum, which is the answer to an addition problem. The difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. The product is the answer to a multiplication problem. And a quotient is the answer to a division problem. Just make sure you can differentiate those when you see these sentences written for you. Okay, um, when you see, let's just practice a couple of these at first. And uh, we'll say a number. How do you write that in algebra? Well, we'll just something like, you know, X or N or whatever number or letter that you'd like to use. The sum of a number and five. Well, we have a number. The sum of that and five means we're going to add a number with five. There you go. How about this one? The opposite of a number decreased by five. Well, if this is a number, then this is the opposite of a number. If it's decreased by five, that means we're subtracting five from it, right? So we'll put negative x minus five. There we go. Okay, how about this one? The sum of the opposite of a number and negative eight. So break this down into pieces. We have a sum, so we'll be adding something, right? We have the opposite of a number, negative x, and we're gonna add negative eight to it. So you can say negative x, plus negative eight. Or if you want to go ahead and write negative x minus eight, same thing. Okay, here's another one. The product of twice a number and 12. So product means we're gonna multiply, all right? So something's gonna get multiplied here. You can use a dot, you can use a parentheses, whatever you'd like to do. So we're gonna multiply twice a number. Well, if a number is x, then twice a number would be two x, right? We're going to multiply twice a number, multiply with 12. So you can put 2x times 12. And you can go ahead and just finish that out. What is 2x times 12? That'd be 24x, right? There you go. Okay, here's another one. The sum of, which means we're going to add, twice a number and negative 3. So twice a number, let's go ahead and write 2x. We're going to add that to negative 3. So we can put plus, and then parentheses, negative 3. Or we can just go ahead and write minus three. There we go, okay? Five times the sum of twice a number and negative five. Ooh, okay, we're getting kind of complicated here. Okay, well, let's break, you know, break this down into pieces here. Five times something, all right? Now here's the something. The sum of twice a number and negative five. So let's first do the inside. The sum of twice a number and negative five. Well, we're gonna add, right? So twice a number, we'll say is two x. And we're going to add 2x, in other words, the sum of twice the number and negative 5. So we can just put plus negative 5 or we can just put minus 5, right? In other words, this is this part here, right there, the right part. But we're going to say 5 times all that, which means we're going to go right there, put a 5 on the outside. The entire thing gets multiplied by 5. You wouldn't just put 5 and then dot and then 2x, then minus 5, because that would suggest, in other words, if it looked like this, that would suggest that you're just multiplying the 5 by the 2x. And we're not. We're multiplying 5 times this whole thing, which is right here. All right? 6 times the sum of twice the opposite of a number and negative 9. Ooh, okay. Well, we can look at this again. But 6 is going to be 6 times something. Well, here is the something right here. And let's break that down first, all right? The sum of twice the opposite of a number and negative 9. So we're going to add something to negative 9, which means we can just put in minus 9. What are we going to add to it? Twice the opposite of a number. Well, this is twice a number, right? And this would be twice the opposite of a number, like that, right? Two times a number or two times the opposite of a number. In other words, two times negative x, we can just say a, a positive times a negative is a negative, there we go. Now, once we have that, we'll say, okay, we're gonna go six times the entire thing. We'll put it all in parentheses so we know we're multiplying by the entire thing, all right? The product of seven and the sum of a number and 10. So we're gonna multiply, and we're gonna multiply this, and we're gonna multiply this, all right? 
Product means multiply, so if you want to put a dot here, you can. Let's do this. We're going to multiply 7 by something, so let's just go ahead and put 7. And we're going to multiply what by 7? We're going to multiply the sum of a number and 10. Well, let's go ahead and do it. A number, add it to 10. There you go. The entire thing gets multiplied. Okay. Here's another. The sum of 3 times a number and negative 4. All right, so that's a chunk. The sum of 3 times a number and negative 4. All that gets multiplied by 6. So if you want to just go ahead and start, the whole thing is multiplied by 6. We'll just put 6, and the whole thing's going to be multiplied by 6. What's going to be multiplied? The sum of 3 times a number and negative 4. Well, 3 times a number, we can write how? 3x, right? We're going to add 3x to negative 4. We can put plus negative 4. Let's just go ahead and do the, you know, minus 4. It's the same thing. And there we go. Okay. We're not worried at this point about distributing the 6 through that and figuring out what it is. We're just worried about putting down on paper what they're saying in the English, you know, phrase. Okay. The sum of negative 11 and 7 times the opposite of a number. Okay. Well, we got the sum of negative 11 and 7. Let's do that first. So negative 11 plus 7. All that is going to be multiplied by the opposite of a number. Well, if the whole thing were multiplied by the number, that would just be x. If it's multiplied by the opposite of a number, it'll be multiplied by negative x. And there you go. All right, let's try translating this into an equation. Same exact kind of thing. We're going to go left to right, just like phonics. And like you're, it's like you're reading a, a word by sounding it out. It's exactly kind of what you're doing here. So one-fifth of a number is 8. Now, we've done this before in previous times where we did uh, word problems. So one-fifth of a number is 8. So we can go one-fifth of, let's multiply, a number, x or whatever letter you want to use, is equals and then 8. And usually we won't put the dot there. We'll just usually put something like this. One-fifth x is equal to 8. Now again, I'm going to remind you, what if you saw this circled equation in your book and Saxon, you know, one of your problem sets, they said, okay, solve for x. You would look at that and go, yeah, no problem. I multiply by the reciprocal, 5 over 1, the answer is 40. Got it. All you're doing is one extra step and it's taking the English phrase or sentence and turning it into an algebraic equation. Okay, how about this one? Three-fifths of a number is 15. Well, three-fifths, three-fifths of a number, that means you're multiplying by a number, which is x, we'll call it, or a, whatever you want, is equals 15, 15. There you go. And again, you can solve that. You just multiply both sides by what? What would you multiply by? Five-thirds, right? Okay, all right. Translate this into an equation. Now, we don't care. There's decimals there, but who cares? We just go the same thing, right? Uh, excuse me, left to right. Translate into an equation. 0 0.32 of what number is 24.32? Well, let's do it. 0.32 of means to multiply. By what number? We don't know. We'll call it x. Is equals 24.32. And there you go. And all you'll need to do is, you know, to solve this is just, is just uh, divide by 0.32 on both sides. And you just do long division over there. That's it. All right, here's another one. What decimal part of 42 is 26.04? Okay, well, let's just go left to right. Well, any, anytime they say what decimal part, what number, what this or that, there we go. It's going to be X. What decimal part? I don't know. X of 42, that means times 42 is equals 26.04. There she goes. That's it. Now, usually we won't write things like x times 42. Let's go ahead and you know, turn it into the way we usually see it. 42x equals 26.04. And again, you would just, you know, to find the answer, you just go over here and do your, you know, long division and do it that way. We won't do it now. Okay. All right. How about this one? Pause it. Look at this one. Go ahead and pause it and try it and then come back when you're finished. Do not have to solve the equation. Just set up the equation. What's it look like? Pause it. Okay, let's do it. 0 0.42, I'll just put 0 0.42 to save a little time. 
of 86, I'll just use parentheses, you could have used a dot, that's fine, is equals what number? X. And if you don't like going you know, with the X on the right, go ahead and flip the entire equation, X equals 0. 0.42 times 86. There we go. We can do the arithmetic if you want to. Which I don't think you want to, do you? I don't, yeah, I don't want to either. Okay. All right. Let's work on the practice set. Go ahead and try A. Pause it and try A and then come on back. Okay. A will be 5 times that sum. 3x minus 5. Okay. Try B. Go ahead and pause it and try B. B is 3 times the whole entire thing in parentheses x minus 15. All right. Try C. Pause it and try C. C will be 5 times x minus 13. And again, all these, obviously, you can use whatever letter you want. A, B, C, D, N, X, whatever you want. All right, pause it and try D. All right, there is D. That's a little bit more tricky, but anytime you see the opposite of a number, it's going to be negative x or negative N or whatever you choose to use. All right, pause it and try E. All right, there's E. That's the setup. Okay, 1, 0.16 times x equals 10.24. There we go. Okay. All right. And you would actually, so if you solve that, you could go ahead and just go like this and go 0 0.16 into 10.24. You would move the decimal point over twice and get a 16. And you'd move that over twice and get a 1,024. Then just do the arithmetic. Okay. Pause it and try F. All right. There's the setup for F. 80 times a number equals 60. And if you went ahead and divided by 80 on both sides, you would get x is equal to 60 over 80. Oops, I said 800. Uh, get rid of the zeros. That's 6 eighths or 3 fourths if you reduce the fraction. Actually, if you put 3 fourths as an answer, totally fine. So good enough. Okay, pause it and try a G. Okay, there's your setup for G. 0.48 times 8 equals x, so x is equal to 38.4. Okay, all right, that was it. Practice those today. There'll be a lot of examples in your problem set, so make sure you have those down really well. If you get half of them wrong, don't worry about it. Look at your answers and figure out what you did wrong and get them for next time. So, all right, see you guys next time and have a great day.